everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and today's featured interactive read aloud is Robbie's Roar. Now, in today's book, we are going to be talking a lot about feelings again, emotions. And I know recently we've talked about feelings of being worried or anxious or even sad. But today, my friends, when you hear the word roar, what kind of feeling do you think that is about? I'm thinking anger, right? When you're mad, you kind of roar like a lion or a tiger. Well, in today's book, we're going to be talking about feelings of anger or being mad. Now, my friends, sometimes when you're mad, have you ever heard someone say to you, control your temper or stop having a temper tantrum? Have you heard that word temper before? Usually people use the word temper to talk about someone who gets mad really easily and gets angry a lot. And this book is going to be about how you can control your temper, how you can control some of those angry feelings that you might feel inside so that you don't end up being too angry and hurting other people. Now, before we get started, though, my friends, I do want to remind you that it is okay to feel angry and mad sometimes. It's okay to feel all of the feelings you're feeling. You can be mad. When it starts to become a problem is when you're so angry and mad that you start to hurt other people, too, and make them feel not so great as well. That's when the controlling your temper part comes in. It's all right to be mad, but it's not okay to hurt others while you're upset. And I know sometimes it doesn't feel that great to be mad all the time, so if you can find a way to control your temper or find a way to calm down and feel better, that can be helpful for you too. My friends, can you think of a time where you're so angry you kind of felt like you just lost control? Yeah, because you were so mad. And you know what? That's happened to me before. And I remember that not only was I mad, but I also felt kind of scared to be that upset and not have control over how I was feeling and what I was doing too. I was so upset that I was saying some really unkind things that I didn't mean. Has that ever happened to you where you maybe said something that you didn't really mean it just because you're mad? Yeah. Feeling that angry can be a scary feeling too. So again, it's important for us to figure out, well, how can we help calm ourselves down? My friends, if you remember that time you were very upset, what helped calm you down or how did you start to feel better? Ah, well, if that helped you, then remember that for next time too. That could be a good way for you to calm down if you are feeling angry. Okay, well, before we start our book, this book is so big that it's hiding some of the things I've got going on in the background of our reading studio today. So if you take a look back there, I see an animal, two animal heads. What animal is that? A tiger, two tiger heads. And the reason we have tigers is, well, you know, Robbie's roar. What animal do you think we're going to be talking about in this book about anger? Tigers. So this has actually got to do with our craft at the end of the book, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but I just wanted to show you this real quick little sneak peek. Ah, oh, it opens up. But I'll share more about that at the end of our read aloud. I wanted to share with you some things over here. These are some things that I use to help calm myself down if I'm upset, and sometimes I also use them with my kiddos in class because it helps them too. So thumbs up if you have seen one of these things before. This, oh, and I already shook it up, is called a sparkle jar. And what it is, my friends, is if you look closely, there's all this glitter in it. And this glitter kind of settles on the bottom of the jar. You can see most of the glitter is down here where it's darker. And then up here where it's light because there's no glitter. The way it works is that all the glitter's here. And if it's like that, you just shake it up. Give it a good shake. And oh, look at that. That, if you look closely, you see all the glitter swirling around. And I know, my friends, that when I watch this, it's kind of soothing. It kind of calms me down to see all the glitter spinning around. And I'm going to watch it slowly go to the bottom of the jar. And as it slowly goes down, it kind of calms me down, especially if I'm breathing really hard because I'm angry and upset. I kind of take a breath and relax with the jar. And by the time the glitter all gets to the bottom, sometimes I feel a lot more peaceful. So this is a great way to calm down, my friends. And guess what? 
It's super easy to make and you can even make one at home. If you're interested in doing that, check out those links below in my blog. I connect you to some pages where you can learn how to make it. Another thing I have here, and I use this at school sometimes too in my class, so if you've had me for a teacher, or maybe your teacher uses one of these too, you'll kind of know what it is. It's a chime. Chimes make sounds, and it's a very calming sound to me. And I'll show you an example. But when I play it, the sound kind of rings for a while, and then it slowly fades away. So kind of like the calming jar, I hear it, and then it calms me down. Are you ready to hear it? So it goes like this. I use this stick, and I tap these little bars, these chimes, to make a sound. Ready? Mm. And I take a deep breath of that last one. If you hear the sound keeps going and it slowly gets quieter. And that sometimes calms me down too. If I'm so mad hearing that clear, bright sound and then slowly get quieter, sometimes helps me slow down and think a bit and calm down. So those are just some tools that I use. And if you're interested in this, my friends, you can check it out on my blog also. I'll put a link to it. Just wanted to share those ones because I like them. They're simple and one of them you can even make. Okay, but back to our book. I think we're ready to get started. Are you? All right. The title of today's interactive read aloud is Robbie's Roar, written and illustrated by Tom Percival. So remember, just one name on the title means that this person did what? Y'all are getting good at this. One name on the title means that that person wrote all of the words and drew all of the pictures. And this book was published by Bloomsbury Publishing. So they helped make the book. And my friends, this name of this author and illustrator might sound familiar to you, Tom Percival, because we've read a couple, two of his books before, and they kind of look like this book too. Different colors, different characters, but do you remember? Good memory, my friends. He's also written the book, Ruby Finds a Worry, and Perfectly Norman. And both of these books, my friends, I've also read on my storybook. So if you want to check them out, you should also see these other books in this series. So that's where you might have heard of this author and illustrator before. And since those books are pretty cool books, I'm sure this one's going to be too. Well, I'm looking at this cover and I see there's some more words at the top. And these words say, what happens when Ravi can't control his temper? Uh oh, and remember we said tempers when you get really mad, so mad that you might hurt some people in the process. And we already spoke about it a little in the beginning, my friends, but can you think of another example where you couldn't control your temper? Can you tell me about it? Yeah. Well, hopefully you were able to figure it out and calm down like the other time you told me about. But this book is going to give us an idea of some things we can do and some questions we can ask ourselves to help us calm down. Books are super helpful. Well, we looked at the words on the cover. Let's take a quick look at the picture before we get started. So my friends, what do you see going on on this cover? Yeah, I see a little boy. And what do you notice about him? He's got some extra features. He's got some ears and a tail. And I'm noticing like these red lines like these sharp lines zigzags coming out of him that kind of makes me think that the lines show his feelings and Robbie's roar kind of makes me think of what feeling the angry feeling so he's got these red hot sparks coming out of him he's got this tiger tail tiger ears but look at his face though does his face look super mad no not on this picture well Sounds like Robbie's having a hard time controlling his anger. I'm wondering why and how does he end up controlling his temper? Any guesses to why Robbie might be so mad? Let's find out. So here we've got our title page. Remember, that means it has the title of our story, Robbie's Roar, and the author and illustrator, Tom Percival. And this has a very cool picture going on in... <gasps> I see some extra new characters on this page. What's going on on this title page, my friends? Yeah, do you see Ravi? 
here's Ravi because he looks like the guy on the cover. So I'm guessing that's who Ravi is. And I'm also seeing some other people here. Who do you think they are? Maybe friends or maybe even brothers or sisters. He's got a pet dog, it looks like. And even over here, this looks like, who might this be? Maybe dad. Kind of looks like a grown-up. Has a cup with a heart on it. Okay, let's begin. Ravi was the youngest and the smallest in his family. And if I look over here, it shows his family, my friends. And look, those were his brothers and sisters. How many brothers and sisters does he have? Looks like one, two, three. And he is the smallest and the youngest one. My friends, do you have brothers and sisters? If you do, how about you? Are you the youngest, oldest, in the middle? And how about are you the smallest, the biggest, in the middle? Hmm. I am in the middle and right now I think I actually am smallest even though I am in the middle because my younger brother is taller than me and I think my older sister is a little taller than me too. Hmm. So I'm the middle but the smallest right now. Well, Robbie's the youngest and the smallest. Everyone was bigger than him. Dot, dot, dot. Remember, these are my ellipses. Those dot, dot, dots I means it's gonna continue on the next page. But before we turn the page, let's see, what are they doing over here? Yeah, it looks like they're marking how tall they are. My friends, do you do that at home where you mark how tall you are to see how you've grown? Yeah, do you know how tall you are? How tall are you? Hmm. When I was younger, I would do this. We'd mark our height on the wall with a pencil to see how much we grew each time. It was really fun. We'd be really proud if we grew. I haven't grown in a few years because I'm already grown up. And if I'm looking at these labels here, it tells me the names of his other siblings. So he has a sibling named Kieran, Jaya, and Anil. And then his is Robbie. So everyone was bigger than him. Even Biscuits, the dog. So their dog's named Biscuits, and even the dog is bigger than him. My friends, do you have a pet at home? What kind of pet? Are you bigger than the pet, or is the pet bigger than you? Usually you're bigger than the pet. This must be a big dog. But you know what? Most of the time, being the smallest was great. My friends, can you think, what are some great things about being small? What might be some bonuses that only if you're small you can do? Those are good ones. I know if you're small, sometimes you're really good at hide and seek because you can fit in those small places. So sometimes being small is great, but sometimes, just sometimes, it wasn't. Can you think of some examples for why it might not be so great to be small sometimes? Yeah, those are good examples. One day, Robbie and his family went on a picnic. There was a race to the train, and guess who came last? Robbie. Sometimes if you're small, you can't run as fast because your legs aren't as long, right? Well, everyone else got a comfy seat, but Robbie had to squeeze in with Dad and Biscuits. Oh, and how does he feel about that? Not too happy, huh? Because what is Biscuits doing? Looks like Biscuits is farting. Oh. So is that a good spot to sit? No. Because it's smelly, but he also looks kind of squished, right? <laughs> yeah. Because then Biscuits made a bad smell. So squished, kind of stinky. Oh, man. So they went to the bus, and where did they go to? What is the setting, the background of this part of the story right now? The park, huh? When everyone got to the park, they played hide and seek. It was meant to be fun, but, but that tells me it probably wasn't as fun as they thought it would be. But Robbie couldn't find anyone. Maybe he feels he's too small to see him. And my friends, do you see where they're hiding? Yeah, point to them. I see one here and here. And why might Robbie have a hard time finding this one up here? Is he so small he might not think to look up? Or maybe he just can't see that high. Oh yeah, yeah. So 
Robbie having a fun day so far? Uh, oh, no, I'm seeing some more examples of why Robbie's not too happy to be so small right now. What do you notice, my friends? Yeah. At the playground, the monkey bars were too high. Can you reach the monkey bars, my friends? Robbie can't. He's too small. And the gaps between the logs were too wide to jump. Oh, how is he feeling about that? He's not happy about that. And what do you notice, my friends, above his head? Kind of reminds me of the cover. See some of those red sparks, right? And maybe I'm thinking those symbolize his feelings of anger, right? It's just small dots here because he's a little upset. But then what about here? Oh, it's getting bigger, right? And then when Ravi wanted to go on the big slide, the man said, sorry, son, you're too small. Because I see here you have to be this tall to ride and it doesn't look like Robbie's big enough. My friends, are there some rides that you can't go on yet because you're not tall enough? How do you feel about that? Sometimes it's a little disappointing, right? Well, Robbie got so mad that his face turned red. But then Dad said, come on, let's get some ice cream. So it looks like Dad noticed Robbie's getting kind of mad and he's trying to calm him down. Ice cream sometimes helps, right? My friends, how do you feel when you eat ice cream? Happy, if you like it. But I noticed here, my friends, that the little red sparks on his head got bigger right there too, huh? But wait a minute, look at this picture, my friends. Did the ice cream help? How can you tell? Because Robbie looks very upset now, right? What color is his face? Red, and red is kind of the color of anger sometimes. And what's going on with those sparks around his head? There's a whole bunch. If I look closer at this picture, my friends, why do you think he might be so upset for getting ice cream? I'm kind of thinking back to It's Not All Rainbows with Kevin the Unicorn. And remember how they ran out of his sparkle juice? And they ran out of ice cream? Could be. That's a good connection to that story. Everybody ran off to get the ice cream. And guess who came last? Ravi. And then when Ravi went to get his ice cream, dot, 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 what do you think? There was none left. Well, that really did it. What do you think that means, my friends? That that really did it. Sounds to me like that was the last straw, right? Robbie was upset before that, but now he is really mad. Oh no. <gasps> what is going on here, my friends? What is happening to Robbie? He's turning into a tiger. This looks like he's so mad. Robbie was furious. Wow, my friends, can you say that word furious? Ready? Three, two, one. Furious means so angry. It's another big word to say mad. Robbie was furious. He growled and his stripy tail popped out from the back of his shorts. Oh. Then he sprouted two furry ears and sharp pointy teeth and stripy orange fur. <gasps> Robbie had turned into a... Tiger. He is so mad that he turned into a tiger. <gasps> My friends, have you ever felt that mad that you feel like you could just be a tiger? And that tiger took a huge deep breath and then, dot, 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 and then what? Why do you think he's taking a big breath for? You think he's going to roar? I think you're right, my friends. I think you can read this word with me. And you have to say it so loud because look how big it's written. So it's just like that word on the cover it starts with the letter R. This is what tigers do. Are you ready? We're going to say what he did in three, two, one. He roared. Oh, wow, my friends. Can you do that one more time super loud with me? He roared.
Have you ever roared because you were so mad? Maybe you yelled super loud. I've done that before when I was mad. Not the best thing to do, but sometimes you just have all those feelings in there. They just need to get out, huh? So now here he is. He's all mad like a tiger. And I'm looking at these pictures of these other people's faces. And how are they feeling about Ravi? Kind of look a little scared of him, huh? Well, Ravi's brother looked a bit nervous, kind of scared and not sure. And he handed the tiger his ice cream. But do you think he wants to hand the tiger his ice cream? I'm thinking he's not really doing it because he wants to help and be kind to Ravi. Why do you think he's giving Ravi his ice cream now? Because he's kind of scared. And when the tiger went to sit down, there were no open benches. So he roared and everybody got out of his way. Hmm. So it kind of seems like Ravi's getting what he wants. But how do you think he's making the other people feel about it? Not so good. According to Ravi, it was great being a tiger. And why might Ravi though like being a tiger so much? He has all these angry feelings, so why does he think it's so great? Probably because he's kind of getting everything he wants, right? By yelling at his brothers and sisters, he's kind of getting what he wants. I'm a little worried for his brothers and sisters, huh? Well, the tiger did all the things that Ravi couldn't. He swung across the monkey bars. He leaped across the logs. He even slid down the big slide. So when Ravi's angry and acting like a tiger, he doesn't care about the rules. He's just doing what he wants. And he gets to do all these things he couldn't do. How is he feeling right now? Pretty good with himself, right? He's angry, but he gets to do all these cool things. And he's like, I don't care what anyone else says. I'm going to do it. Because nobody dared to say no to Ravi. Huh. Well, it's sounding like he's having a pretty good time being angry. But my friends, you think he's going to feel this great the whole time? Thumbs up. Or you think his feeling's going to change soon and he's not going to like being angry too much? Thinking there's going to be a change soon. Well, since no one said no to him, Ravi the tiger went wild. <laughs> And oh my goodness, my friends, it looks like he's just going to do whatever he wants. And oh, what do you notice about these friends in the background? What are they doing? How are they feeling? How can you tell? Yeah, because their faces, like these two look kind of scared. And this one's trying to say like, stop, kind of trying to protect herself or her friends from Robbie. He's so angry that people think they need to maybe protect others from him. He roared and growled and did exactly what he wanted. And here he is. We know this word, our, our word. Can you read it with me in three, two, one? Roar! But, you know, here's a change, my friends. That but word is a change word. It makes me think a change is happening. And what is the change here? Look at his face. I think he's noticing something, right? About how these friends are feeling. But soon he found that nobody wanted to play with him. Why not? Because is he being a very fair and fun player? Is he even being a kind player? No, my friends, do you want to play with someone who steals the ball and doesn't follow the rules? No. Not really, huh? What kind of people, what kind of friends do you want to play with? Yeah. Well, suddenly the tiger felt a bit sad and nowhere near as angry. Now his anger's kind of going away and he's feeling sad. In fact, you know what? He couldn't even quite remember what had made him so angry in the first place, huh? Has that ever happened to you that you were so mad that you just, you did all these mad things, you yelled and you screamed and you did all these things and then after a little bit, you actually kind of forgot why you were so mad. Has that happened to you? Yeah? Tell me about that time. Yeah, and 
Once he realized, wait, I forgot what I was so mad about, what did you do next? And how did you feel? Hmm. Well, let's see. So Ravi's kind of forgot why he was so mad. He's feeling kind of sad. And wait a minute. Who are these people over here? His family. And it looks like they're running to him. And if I look at their faces, how are they feeling? Looks like they're kind of worried about Ravi. What do you think they're going to do? Help him out some way. So here's his family and I'm sorry, said the tiger in a quiet voice. And when he said that, my friends, everything felt better. That's okay, said dad. Good job for saying sorry. And then, my friends, wait a minute. Here's Ravi as a tiger. He says sorry and then what happens? He turned back to a boy. Seems like his anger, his angry feelings are gone. And what did he do? What did he say to make those angry feelings go away? Looks like he calmed down. He was sitting quietly on the bench. And then when his brothers and sisters came over, he said, sorry, he apologized for being kind of mean when he was mad, right? And when he said it, my friends, how did he feel? better not so angry anymore and even dad says good job for saying sorry and then without even realizing Ravi became a boy once more and that was the last time that Ravi ever turned into a tiger although every now and then he did have a bit of a growl and instead of roar this time this one says He's a little upset because, hey, what happened? He knocked over his sandcastle, but is he going to explode and roar and get all super angry like last time like a tiger? No, right? He's going to be angry because he says, grr, he has a little growl now. But he's going to control his temper. He's not going to get all mean and hurt and be rude to the other people around him, right? But instead, look, he's upset. He's going to give them a kind of an upset look. And then, look, the other people feel sorry now, too, because they know they did something wrong, right? And Robbie's not yelling and screaming at them. He's just showing them that he's not too happy, right, my friends? Because, again, it's okay to get angry and upset at things. That's fine. People have those feelings, and you should have them. If, something, if someone does something wrong to you, you should be upset because then it will help you stand up for yourself and fix it. It's important not to get so upset that you turn into a tiger and roar. Because then you can hurt other people's feelings, right? And if that happens, though, what can you do? Say you're sorry. My friends, can you think of an example of that? When you were so mad that you maybe hurt someone else and then you had to end up apologizing later? Yeah? Can you share it with me? I'd love to hear some other examples of how you fixed your problems when you were a little upset and then felt better. That's a good example. Well, I'm glad that in the end you're able to apologize and then you could all feel better, huh? Well, next time we're feeling a bit angry, let's remember instead of turning to a tiger and roaring, maybe just let out a little growl, find a way to calm down, and then see what we can do to fix the problem and feel better. So the end, that was the end of this story, Robbie's Roar, and we are exploring that feeling of anger and being upset and controlling your temper. My right, friends, what was one of your favorite parts? Yeah, I really liked how in the end, his, even though Ravi was kind of mean to his family, in the end, they still ran to him when they realized he was sad and they were ready to forgive him and help him out. Because that's also what families do, right? That's important. Families help each other and take care of each other no matter what. So it's important to forgive people when they apologize too. Because everyone makes mistakes, right? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to think about, my friends, next time that you are super angry and upset and you are about to roar and about to turn into a tiger, what can you do to calm yourself down or to help yourself out so you don't get super upset? What could you do?
those are some great ideas. And that actually leads us into our tiger craft. Are you ready? Let's check it out. So for this week's craft inspired by our story, we have our tiger heads. And the way these work are, these are great tools and crafts to use, my friends, to remind yourself of some things you can do, some questions you can ask yourself when you're feeling really angry that can help you calm down, think about why you're upset, and figure out a way to get through it in a calmer way that won't hurt other people and will actually help you hopefully feel better yourself too. So you can see there's two different versions, like always. There's one that's colored already, so you can print it out with color. There's one that's black and white, so you can color it in yourself. And they say different things. This one says, when I want to roar, dot, dot, dot. Remember, those ellipses mean it continues. Or this one that says, when I am mad, dot, 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 continues on the inside. I'll show you this one first. They're kind of similar. But this one says, when I want to roar, dot, 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 and when you feel like you're so upset that you want to roar, you can use this, open it up, oh, ah, like his mouth, open it up, and inside it has some questions you can ask yourself to figure out why you're upset and how you can maybe calm down and help find a solution to your problem. For example, the first thing you can ask is, what happened that makes me feel angry? And was it one thing or a few different things that made you upset? Because sometimes there's more than one. And then this way you can remember, okay, focus on why am I mad? How can I fix it? And here you can write, I feel angry because, so write it down so you know. Step two, the second thing to ask is, well, is there anything I can do about it? If you're mad, my friends, because someone took something from you or they ruined something of yours, they broke it, what can you do about it? What are your some ideas? If someone broke something of yours, my friends, what could you do? That's a great idea. And you'd write that idea down here. You could say, I would ask them kindly to help me fix it. Or I'd ask them kindly to help me get a new one or replace it. Or I'd ask an adult to help me fix it or talk to the person. Ooh, that leads us to number three. Is there someone I can talk to? Because sometimes, you know, it just helps saying how you're feeling out loud. Like in Ruby Finds a Worry and in It's Not All Rainbows with Kevin the Unicorn. And even in this one, Robbie talked to his family. So here you can put down some people that you could talk to, my friends. Who are some people you could talk to if you're upset? Yeah, people you trust. And then last, that brings us to kind of how our story ended. Do I need to apologize to anyone I roared at? So maybe you did get a little mad, my friends, and maybe there's someone you need to say sorry to to feel better. So you would say yes or no, circle one. And if yes, I need to apologize to, who is it? And I can say, what are some things you could say, my friends? If you roared at someone, how? what are some things you could say to apologize? Yeah, you can say, I'm sorry. Another one is you can say, I'm sorry, I yelled at you. I was upset. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean what I said. I was just angry. Can you forgive me? Things like that. And then I bet you, my friends, if you fix that problem and so that they feel better too, it'll also help you feel better. This one's the same thing. It has the same thing on the inside. There's also a craft where you can make it where you can put your own steps on the inside if you don't want to use these steps. And the directions for this craft and the link to the template to download and use it at home can be found on my blog, My Storybook, by clicking on that link down below. If you do make these crafts or want to share your own reading adventures with me, my friends, please reach out to My Storybook and message me. You can find me on Instagram, on the blog, email me here on YouTube, on Facebook. All those social media links can be found below. I'm even on TikTok now if you want to check out some fun dance videos with books. And as always, my friends, new interactive read aloud videos are coming out every Friday. So tune back in on Fridays. Be sure to subscribe to my storybook to keep up with all of our reading adventures. And a new book a day week is coming out soon, the first week of May. So be on the lookout for that where I will share a new video every day of the week. And I'm working on that. Can't wait to get those reading adventures out to you. Well, it's come to the end of today's reading adventure, my friends. So as always, I hope you're staying safe and healthy. I hope you're going Going on many reading adventures at home while you have this extra time at your house. And I know sometimes when we're stuck at home a lot, we can get angry a bit easier, right? Because we can't go anywhere else and sometimes our feelings get really big. So remember, instead of roaring, 
think about what you can do. What can you ask yourself? And maybe just let out a little grrr growl instead and fix the problem and calm down. Okay, my friends. Well, I will see you next Friday for our new reading adventure. But until then, happy reading. Thank you.